uh, we're going to talk about random quality and what that means. Because random numbers to us look kind of random, but that's because they're numbers. And we don't do that sort of thing for our brains. So I'm going to talk about uh, three different types of random functions. One is like a sort of modern, like pretty OK, statistically like decent random number generator. It generates like decent statistical distributions of numbers. Uh, the next is a cryptographic random number generator. This generates uh, good statistical numbers, but also unpredictable numbers. So if you know like a sequence of numbers that's been generated, like for example, some user password, then you can't predict user passwords that are going to be generated subsequently. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is a really bad random function, because it's hilarious and a great example of how randomness can actually be really low quality and why this is important. Uh, and this is for projects, and it's just going to be really fast. So don't worry too much about that shit. Uh, so, the f so what I've done here, I've written this program uh, that just like does a bunch of shit. It does some chi-squared distributions with random functions. And uh, so that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at chi-squared distributions, which are like it's like it's like a it's like mean and standard deviation sort of except for uh, discrete bins of data. So what I've done here is I've generated uh, random numbers from one to ten, and those are the bins. And we would expect in the chi-squared distribution that they would all have you know about a thousand random numbers because I'm generating ten thousand random numbers, putting them in ten bins, right? So we'd expect each one has about a thousand. So in, in this modern RAND implementation, uh, it's printed twice, or possibly just executed twice. But uh, it, no, it's definitely printed twice. Uh, that's OK. We only need to see one of them. Uh, we get a fairly decent distribution. You can see you know, these things are all about 1,000. And the chi-squared on this is pretty good, 6.44. So since you don't have tables in front of you, the degrees of freedom uh, is it for 10 items is 9. And the uh, critical value for confidence that the, this random uh, number generated would be biased is the 13-ish. So this one is less than 13. We're good here. Uh, the shitty random number generator, we also seem to get decent random numbers. And the chi-squared is low, right? So. So far, so good for the shitty random number generator. And uh, this other random number generator, the ARC4 random number generator, that's uh, an RNG that comes on BSD systems that is a secure pseudo random number generator. And it has a pretty high chi squared in this run, but uh, it's not significant. And depending on how you run it, it actually comes out to a lot bigger things. And if we ran it with more numbers, like a million instead of 10,000, it would probably be lower. But that's whatever. You just take my word for it that it's not biased. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we can run it more with more numbers. We'll do that in a bit. So the thing where we're going to see bias, though, is uh, diagrams. So this is where I've taken one random number, and then the next random number generates, and put like those combinations so we'll see here, like, OK, this is how many times 5 occurred immediately after 10, and this is how many times 9 occurred immediately after 6, right? And so we'd expect, with 10,000 random numbers, there'd be 100 diagrams. We'd expect all these would be about 100, right? And so this being you know, 100 buckets, going to have a higher degrees of freedom, 99, which is about 130 to be confident that it's biased. And so we have all of these combinations of numbers, right? And uh, does anyone know what I mean when I say that the random number generator is biased? Does anyone not know what I mean? It's OK. We have people. Good. Uh, that was really important. A biased random number generator is a generator that doesn't, like the numbers don't look random. <laughs> it, will, it will do some things more often than other things when it's supposed to do everything perfectly randomly. And yeah. so. We can see like the, the range of numbers that it generates. We already saw that all of these random number generators look random. It's, if you look at it from one way, the range of numbers, it's like, OK, they're generating a uh, similar number of all the different numbers, right? But uh, this is where it really falls apart. So 
Uh, you can see this one. This is also basically random-ish. It looks random. All of these numbers are similar to 100. We seem to be getting even amounts of these diagrams. Does everyone understand what I mean by the diagrams? Does anyone not understand what I mean by the diagrams? OK. So diagrams, uh, instead of just pulling one random number and putting it in a bin, I pull two random numbers and say, OK, did like which one came after the other? So uh, it's basically like for if we if we just got a one, you know, what's the chance we get another one, or what's the chance we get an, a two or a three or a four or a ten, and then the same for two and so on. It's like the permutations of two random numbers, yeah? Oh, okay, so it's two one and one two are unique. Yes, because uh, two one would be you, the random number generator will generate a one after a two, right? So we would expect all of these to be one hundred, and so we get a chi squared of eighty seven ish, eighty eight which is less than 130, so we're good for arc4. And then the modern RAND distribution, which is part of FreeBSD, ripped it from their source code. Um, this uh, similar distribution is looking pretty good. OK, all of these have around 100. And we see you know, a chi-squared of 91. It's marginally worse than arc4, but you know, whatever. OK, then the shitty random implementation, we start seeing these <laughs> weird things popping up. And uh, so what this is, is that some pairs are being dramatically overrepresented. And actually, some pairs are not being represented at all. Like, there are some cases where, for example, here you can get you know, six to, from 6, you can get to 1. But you might not be able to get from 6 to 2 ever. Like, I'd have to read through all this, and I don't want to. But like, you might only be able to get to 2 by going from 6 to something else, and then eventually to 2 later, but not 6 to 2 directly ever. Which is not random. Like, <laughs> you'd expect if it's random, it doesn't matter what the previous value is at all. Okay, that makes it because of that. Like, that's predictable, which is you know bad because then people can predict things based on random output that you're getting, right? So the chi squared for this is actually five thousand, <laughs> 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 which puts the probability of this distribution appearing to in a true random, like a true random distribution. Similar to this one, the probability of that appearing is like somewhere on the order of 10 to the negative 1,000th. Like, it's just not. Yeah? If there were a ton of diagram counts above 100, should there also have been a bunch below? Yeah, so some of these, yeah, some of these are unrepresented. Oh, so, so and it's just not printed. Yeah, uh, I didn't populate the list with, uh, oh, with, so like with blanks. So you can see, like, I don't know if you can see, but it's like, shorter. this is how long it is, and then this is how long the other one is. Right. It's like, <laughs> just, I was like, how are there that many 200s without there being a bunch of twos? Because oh, yeah. there's lots of zeros. <laughs> so you just, it's impossible for those to show up. And like, that's really a consequence of how the algorithm is implemented. Um, so the, the arc4 random number generator is really com Yeah? Um, is this a function you just wrote, or is this one actually being used? Uh, it's actually being used. It's actually the default random number generator on Linux. Don't use it. The RAND function is bad for your health. <laughs> uh, so on BSD systems, the RAND function is actually like decent statistically. Uh, on Linux systems, huh? Not cryptographically. Never use RAND on any system for cryptographic stuff. But uh, I, the implementation of this, that's a shared object. Uh, so this random number is literally, yes, that's fine, uh, literally just generated here. Uh, so the previous random number is taken, multiplied by some number, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is added to it. And then it's truncated uh, to 15 bits. So <laughs> <laughs> and then a random number, uh, this is actually a really common way of pulling. I have a lot of casts here, so I'll just rewrite it. Uh, basically, divided by, or plus one. So this is a really common way of, stop, don't highlight that. I know. Um, so a lot of people will run this function by, uh, or use the rand function like this. You'll see this a lot in like example code to get a random number like bounded by some value. Like, if you, so, so this function is implemented this way, so I can, in my code, write you know, random with a maximum of 10, and it'll give me back a random number from 1 to 10. 
So you'll see on Stack Overflow, all over the place, you know, get a random number, modulo it to the maximum number you want, and then uh, add one to it to get it from you know one to the maximum instead of zero to the max minus one, right? The problem is, is you are generating. Uh, oh, la, 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 la. oh, do you have to camera me for writing? So you're generating, you know, a bunch of random bits. I'll pretend this is random. And then you're like, oh, I only want, you know, up to 10. So you're just like, I don't give a shit. Nerp. So those are a lot of bits of randomness that you just threw away because lol. And then you're only using a few bits in the end to get your random number. And it's uh, not good. So uh, especially because this particular RNG, uh, this particular shitty algorithm, uh, generates less random bits on the low end of the byte and more in the high end. So you're not only chopping off like a small fraction of the randomness and using that, you're chopping off the shitty end of the randomness. <laughs> so this this function is really, really bad. And <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, uh, there are really terrible random functions. And uh, if you use a real operating system like FreeBSD, <laughs> you'll be better off. Uh, but I think that algorithm is still in use by Linux. We could look it up, but it's the glibc default algorithm. They might have a different maximum. The, it was very classic, especially on Windows, to have the maximum be to the 15th, which is what I had it in that program. Uh, see, but yes. Hey, right there, 2 to the 15th. That was really common on Windows. I think it's 2 to the 31 on Linux right now, but the algorithm is the same. Yeah? What are some appropriate uses of glibc right? There aren't. Like, if you literally do not give a single fuck and you just want a number. <laughs> like, but if, if you want if you want any sort of quality, glibc rand is, is not what you want. Uh, the f there are a lot of good random functions on the internet, uh, especially in the FreeBSD source code. Or and there's also a bunch of libraries to generate random numbers for you. And if you're using a scripting language, most scripting languages use a Mersenne twister as their random source, which is a very high quality random number generator, but not a cryptographic quality random number generator, <laughs> which is important to remember. So uh, what does Python use? Mersenne twister. Just like literally everything else, except Wait, C. And why is it so easy to figure out what a? Because Mersenne and twisters are predictable. Yeah, it recycles the table. Yeah. yeah, you can if you if you pick up enough bytes that have generated by a Mersenne twister, then you can eventually reconstruct the internal state of the algorithm, and predict what the next bytes are going to it's going to produce. And then you can predict what passwords are going to be generated for people in your LastPass app, and then you can use people's generated passwords. Like it's not, not an ideal situation. But that right there is the distinction between cryptographically secure and right. generated and not. And yeah. Not right. So a cryptographically secure random number generator, like Andrew said, is one that is not predictable. Like I just said, the Mersenne twister, you get enough of its numbers, you can predict its output. Uh, that makes it insecure. But if you can't predict its output ever, then it's cryptographically secure. And by ever, you know, it could be literally ever, or it could be, you know, without 800 billion years of data, it's like functionally equivalent, right? So uh, you want to use good random stuff. And there are, is, is there a crypto library in this Python standard library yet? No. Well, yay. Yeah, pi, OK, so PyCrypto, I was going to say, if there was one in the standard library, I wouldn't suggest a library. But there is the uh, PyCrypto library, like these two people have said. Oh my god. Yeah. So as Jared has suggested, PyNACL, NACL. Uh, NACL is a library written by uh, some very smart people for doing cryptographic functions. It does like encryption and randomness and hashing and 
other like security related stuff. But yeah, PyCrypto or PyNACL bindings for the NACL library uh, will be able to generate good random numbers for you, and you should not use the uh, built-in random number generators in any language for your cryptographically secure random numbers because in almost every language, the uh, it's better to do use a statistically decent random number generator, which is the default on uh, a lot of operating systems, like the FreeBSD RAND implementation is now a statistically decent one. That's the one I use. Uh, but uh, And the glibc one is even worse. And most languages, like I said, use a Mersenne twister besides C. So that's just statistically good, not cryptographically strong. So always use a crypto library's random functions for generating your LastPass passwords, because LastPass does. But also, uh, yeah, for your applications that you're writing. And uh, the reason that people do that uh, is generating uh, cryptographically good numbers. Like, let's uh, play with this for a second. Mm. So we're going to generate a million cryptographically secure. Or let's do it with 10 million. And it takes some time, right? Like everyone noticed that, that took an amount of time. So, but if we if we do like the decent modern random function, uh, that is the same number, right? Okay, this is. It's similar in speed, actually. Well, the extra shitty one should be fine, but. Uh, <laughs> R4 random is a pretty good one. So, man, I should time these. Maybe I'm just wrong, and R4 random is really the best random function. You should always use that instead. <laughs> Wait, I wanted to uncomment this one. But uh, I was going to say it's common for standard libraries to use just statistically good random number generators because cryptographically good ones are slower, but not on BSD. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that is then, but yay for PyCrypto. Uh, Jared, do you know anything about that? PyCrypto? Not PyCrypto. Why? It does. That would be my guess. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, it doesn't matter on this computer, though. Okay. So, for the people who are watching the video, Jared suggested that a cryptographic random number generator should rely on a system entropy source, which is true. Uh, and also, a reason that you might not want to use that as your random number generator for a standard library because. The standard library is supposed to run on all sorts of wonderful systems that might not necessarily have good entropy sources. So you can't guarantee that your uh, cryptographically secure random number generator is cryptographically secure. So you might as well not claim it. So you might as well just pick a really popular random implementation like the Mersa and Twister, which like literally everyone uses. For And also, a lot of these were added into the language a long time ago, whereas I think Arc4 random is not that old. Random. Yeah, 97. But a lot of these uh, languages were written before 97. Uh, and the Mersenne Twister has been around since like the 80s or the 70s. So yeah, we're done here. And this has been randomness. <laughs>